All right, again, we're going to go through this real quickly because I think we've done most of it. Uh, you didn't get something you want me to wait, you'll just have to tell me. First thing on this, just doing this example, going back over some stuff that was before break. Uh, this is the last section, so we will have a test. Try to have a test next week, and then your exam will be the following week. Uh, about 10% of workers in the U.S. commute two jobs by carpooling. You randomly select eight workers. What's the probability that exactly four of them carpool? The only reason I put this example on here is so that we could use the chart. I don't remember if we did this or not uh, the other time we went over this, but we're going to do it now. So if you turn to the third page of the chart where it says binomial distribution, that's what we were doing the previous before the notes that we're going to cover today that we've already covered. Uh, first thing you should probably do on this is find, uh, change the pin. We need to find, what was it, our N? What's our N this time? Eight. Eight. So that's what we're picking from. We need to find our X. What's our X this time? Four. And then we need to find our percent, our probability, probability of X. I can't remember how we we're uh, showing that before this. I need to look back at it. What is it this time? So on the chart, if you're on this chart, over here on the side it's got N and X, and then across the top it's got the probabilities. I guess we were just putting this as P, weren't we? That was just P. So we go down to where N is 8, X is 4, and over to where our probability is 0 0.1, not 0 0.01, but 0 0.1. So if we go out in the hallway, and we stand and we pick out eight people, the probability that exactly four of them are going to say that they commute to work, they carpool to work, the probability is 0 .005. What if it said less than four? Could we still use the chart? Yeah, we do the same thing on the chart. You go over to where, go down to where X or N is 8, X is 4. Look over there. And we want less than 4, so we don't want 4, but we want 3, 2, 1, and 0, and we add all them up. So just to try to refresh your memory on the binomial stuff, it's been a while. Right, looking forward to this test next week over this stuff that's been a while that we've done in about three weeks. Yeah. Probably be real simple, right? More discrete probabilities. We've already, uh, let's see. We've already talked about this, doing the geometric distribution and, and uh, how do we say it, Phoenix? Poisson. Poisson? Poisson distribution. Yes. I don't think that's how you said that's it. That's how you said it. I looked it up. He said they. Like, it's like, it's he like said said poison. Yeah, he said poison. He said he, he, said he didn't want to film it. Poison. Well, I looked it up and it was poison. Poison. All right, that's what we do. So using these two distributions, uh, the guy's name there. Some of the charts are on here. We can use that. We're also going to uh, learn how to do the calculator, so we could use the charts. We'll try to do it both ways just to show you how to do it using the chart. Uh, and you can use your calculator. Remember these three things, just if your probability is less than 0.5 or less than 50%, then it's skewed left. Skewed left, remember, would be something where you have a tail on the left. So it might look something like this. Skewed right, if your probability is 
uh, or I'm sorry, probability is greater than 0.5. I think I might have said less than. Probability is great or less than 0.5. It's skewed right. So it would look something like this, where you got a tail on the left hand side or on the right hand side over there. Got another difference between my right and left. And if the probability is exactly 0.5, then your graph is going to look more like that normal curve where it's symmetric. Geometric distribution. Uh, I should probably go back and read this real quick. Represents a situation where the trial is repeated until you have a success. So you're looking for one success. That's all we're doing with the geometric distribution. Uh, it's a, again, it's a discrete probability. Does anybody remember from when we started this chapter, what's it mean to be a discrete probability? What can you have? Anybody remembers what discrete means? Probability of each value is between 0 and 1. Sum of all the probabilities is 1. Keep going. That's the one. Discrete just means if we're on a number line, one could be a possible outcome, but could 1.5 be a possible outcome? Remember, discrete, and then the other one that we haven't really talked about yet, we just talked about what it was. Continuous. So everything that we're doing right now for this chapter is discrete. So all your all your stuff is like one, two, three, four, five. There is no 1.5 or 1.7 or any, any of that stuff. Uh, the geometric distribution things that'll make it satisfy a geometric distribution. It's got to be a discrete probability. Uh, a trial is repeated until you have one success. The Repeated trials are independent of each other. So each trial, one doesn't affect the other. The probability of a success is constant for each trial. So if the probability of flipping a head on a coin is one out of two, then it's gonna be that way every time you flip that coin. It's not never gonna change. This was the formula. It's not a hard formula, but still most of you probably, even though it's like, what, one, two, three, maybe four or five buttons to push on your calculator, you probably still would rather use the calculator method. But that's the formula. Probability, how do we find Q? All right, so you just take the problem, whatever the probability is that they tell you and subtract it from one. Uh, from experience, you know that probability that you will make a sale on any given telephone call is 0.23. Find the probability that first sale on a given day will occur on your fourth or fifth sales call. You might want to get out your calculators and we'll talk about that here in a minute. But if we go back to this formula, and if we do this one using the formula, P times Q to the X minus one. So this time P is 0.23. P is 0.23, what's uh, Q? Point seven seven, good. And then X minus one. Experience you, you probably will make a sale on any given telephone call, 0.23, find the probability that your first sale will occur on the fourth or the fifth. So we want x to be 4 and x to be 5. So we're going to have to do this twice. So here we do 4 minus 1. What is 4 minus 1? That's pretty easy. Somebody type that into the calculator for us. Okay, 2, 3 times 0.77 to the third power.
0.05. Now that's the probability that we're sitting here making these calls and the fourth person buys whatever it is that we're selling. Probability that we get it on the fifth call, all that's going to change. And if you're doing this on your calculator, you could actually hit the, what is it, second, then enter, and go back and just change the exponent here. Instead of 4 minus 1, it's going to be 5 minus 1, which is 4. Somebody help us out with that. Now we want the probability that it's either one of those two. So what are we going to do with those two probabilities? Add them together. Looks like we get 0.186. Is that about right? And again, we'll get through this and have the method that you do on your calculator, which most of you will probably rather do. Uh, we talked about uh, gauge last time and free throws. We're not going to go over this again. Same idea, doing the same thing. I'm 100% right now. No, he's not. Yeah. Yeah, first one they count, right? He bricked one. There's a violation. He was lucky that the guy stepped in the lane. There's a violation. Did you get him reshoot it? Yeah. So it yeah, it says, on Wolak, it says 100% free throw. It was somebody on the other team? Yeah. But he bricked that first one, to tell you what. Yeah, it's because when I was ready, I was looking at the rim, and I just see someone go in the lane. I look at him, mess me up. Yeah. It messes you up. It really does. Uh, if you didn't get this written down, this is how you do geometric, the geometric probabilities. If you didn't get it written down, that's how you do it on the calculator. Again, all your calculators. I don't have my calculator with me. <laughs> all your calculators, a lot of them are a little different, so I don't know if you if you have the new calculator, the old calculator. Some of the letters, mine here says go down to D. Some of you guys last time I think said no, you go down to E or so. I don't know. You just have to figure it out. But this is what it should say wh wherever you're going to on your calculator. And again, this is for the geometric distributions. Riley, do you remember how we figured out? Yeah. Just show Daniel. I'm going to just scream it across the room. So you hit second bars, find the geometric PDF, PDF, again with PDF, that's if you're just doing one probability, so it'd be a probability of like five or something, whatever it is that we're dealing with. Hit enter, you put in P, then a comma, then X, then close the parentheses, that's all that is, it's just a parentheses, hit enter, and it's going to do it for you. How many of you have the calculators that you have to put it in this way? Is there any of you? You got to put that one. Yours is that way. Is it E? Is that what you go down to? Do you remember? Then you just put in probability value instead of enter. You just hit paste. You figure it out. I kind of forgot, but I, I think I could remember. It's E. Yours is E on your calculator. Does so anybody have a calculator where it's actually D still? Yes. Is it still D on some of them? So that way I could update my stuff if it's not sure. 
Uh, so if we calculate this, you might want to grab your calculator and we'll try it real quick. If x is 4, uh, let's see, uh, calculate probabilities. Uh, well, not this one. We'll do it. We'll do another one. But if x is 4, if you're using CDF, CDF calculates from whatever number you put in for x and down, all the way down. So if you want everything less than 5, then it'd be 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And you could use CDF and it would add them all up for you instead of you have to go back and find each one and add them all up. So CDF, C just means cumulative, that means you're adding them all up. PDF means uh, just the one. So let's try this one. I think, uh, yeah, we'll try it. Yeah, I got a better free third percentage as well. Right now. So on this, LeBron James makes a free throw shot about 74% of the time. Find the probability that the first free throw he makes, we'll just do for the third one for now. So on this, the things you need, you need your P. What's our P this time? 0.74. And we need our X. What's our X this time? We're just doing... And we should be able to plug this into your calculator. So again, on your calculators, you hit second, bars, go down to Geomet PDF, which could be DE, I don't know, whichever calculator you have. Hit enter. And I think, did it say, what did it say to do? Did it say put in P first? Yeah, put in P, comma. So then put in P, put in X, parenthesis, hit enter, or paste, or whatever it is. What's it say? 0 0.050. So if you watch the Lakers play tonight and LeBron's shooting free throws, he's going to break them all. The, the chances that he misses the first two and makes the third one is 0 .05. All right? Not a very good chance that that's going to happen. So if you're going to, Phoenix is going to lay a bunch of money out in Vegas and say, hey, LeBron's going to miss his first two free throws and make the third one. That's about the chance that it is. I wouldn't is. be surprised if LeBron didn't make a shot for like the third quarter where the Lakers are playing right now. So with this, the reason, why, why is it .05? If he shoots 74%, how come? Because he'll probably make it. Because he's going to make it before. He's he probably going to make either shot. the first or the second one because. He should make all of them. If you're shooting two free throws, if you make one and miss one, what's your percentage? 50%. And he's at 74%. So there's probably a really, really good chance that he's going to make either that first one or the second one. So you're not going to get to the third one before you have your first success. Uh, say it for us, Phoenix. Poisson. 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 You have short term memory loss? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Probability that a specific number of occurrences take place within a given interval of time or space. Uh, this one, we sort of got over most of it, but not all of it. Again, this distribution is different than the others. It's going to be a discrete distribution, so it's got to be 1, 2, 3, 4, so, so on, so on. It can't be 1.5 or anything else. It's got to satisfy all the uh, following. The experiment consists of counting the number of times an event occurs in a given interval. Or it could be in a space. Maybe if we are put that circle on there and we start throwing darts at the board, how many times we're hitting in that certain space there. The probability of the event occurring is the same for each one. So as I'm throwing it, I don't switch and start throwing it with my left hand instead of my right hand, and maybe I can't hit the uh, area that we're looking at. So the probability that I hit it has to be the same every time. 
uh, the number of occurrences in one interval is independent of the number of occurrences in another interval. So all that's saying is if I draw another circle over here and I start throwing it in, Mrs. Barnes is probably wondering what in the world I'm doing right now. I start throwing it in, just because I switched where I'm throwing it at doesn't change anything about it. it it's the same. So you've got to be careful with stuff like this. A lot of times stuff like this is something like, uh, I think we talked about it, the number of deer in a certain area. Well, if you take the area down where 35 goes to Eaton and figure out how many deer there are right there in that area right there by the courthouse and stuff, probably not a whole lot of deer in that area. You take the cornfield across the street, I know there might be more deer in that area than the other one, but they're supposedly supposed to be the same to be able to use a, one of these distributions. And, uh, okay. All right, the formula for Poussin, is that how you said it? Poussin's distribution. <laughs> is that formula? Again, there's a way to do it on the calculator. This one I, I can completely understand why you wouldn't want to use this formula and you'd rather use the calculator. I think for the geometric distributions, the formula is easier than punching stuff into the calculator, but for this one, probably not. Yeah, it looks a little complicated. The E here, remember this E, don't let this confuse you. This E is a number just like pi. It's a set number, and it's there should be an E button on your calculator somewhere. And E is approximately 2.71818, so on, so on, so on. If you dealt with logarithms and, and any other math class doing logs, you probably dealt with E. Uh, the mean number of accidents at a certain intersection is 3. What is the probability? I'm going to write this down over here. So the mean, that's the X bar, is 3. What's the probability in any given month that four accidents will occur? So we want four this time. And I'm going to go through this real quick. This is the way to do it on your calculator, and we're going to try to do it together. Notice on this one, this is, again, this is for Poussin's distribution. How you do it? Wait, <laughs> I remember how to do it. Why didn't you tell me? Because yeah. he walked away before I could remember. <laughs> That's is good, Jeff. That's good. That's is good. That's is good. I'll get done with that. So, Riley, you'll tell him because I can't remember which one I was looking I don't know if we did. I've seen some wild things. These ones. Well, well I'll calculate it. I saw a man. Do the other one. What? Yeah. <laughs> Geometric? Yeah. James? No. The other other one. Oh, yeah. That's gross. So you have to change this to variable. So that would be good. You have to change that to variable. I looked at it for a second. I was like, there's no change. Oh, yeah. I thought he was shaving his head too much. Oh, no, he did it. He was talking about doing it in Spanish. What do you mean? I thought he was shaving his head. He said, oh. It's a distribution. We're going to do it. I'm like, what about that? Because he said it like this. I was like, oh, he's going to shave his head. Okay. No, I knew it was going to be Five minutes later, I was in the shower. And I thought you said, I thought you said that's when you were telling me that why 
Tucson was right next to geometry on there somewhere or something. Uh, yes. yes. So, uh, it's, right, it's right before geometry. Is that what it is? I thought it was right close to it somewhere. Yeah. So if we do this, grab your calculators. We'll try it with Poussin's no. distribution here. All you're going to do is hit second, bars. This time, go down to his name, PDF, instead of geometric or geomet PDF. You hit enter. You put in the mean, which the mean they tell us this time is 3, comma, then X, which is the number of occurrences. I didn't put it on this one, but you probably put the frequency there too. I don't think the frequency is actually necessary on them, but just in case. And then hit enter, and it should tell you what we were looking at here is if you have some intersection, so we have this intersection on our road here, and there's usually three accidents per month. The probability of having four accidents occur at this intersection during any month, that's what it's telling me. What's it come out to be? What's the probability that there's going to be four accidents? 0.168. So that's about 16, 17% chance that that month there's going to be an accident. four accidents. If there's three there, let's do this. Instead of doing four, let's just do one. If you know that there's three accidents at that certain intersection every month, an average of three, what's the probability that the, the, any month you pick there's going to be one accident? Wait, one for me. That was not right. Mean three, one. Yeah. Yeah. Point one for me. Bro. Oh, I know why. Because I was thinking something else. So, there's a chance of there being exactly one accident is about 15%. What I was thinking is... Is there's going to be one? Right. What's the chances that there's going to be one or more? So, to do that, what we could do, if we wanted one or more accidents, what's the chance that there's going to be any accident there? Well, to do that, then instead of putting in one, we put in zero. So plug that into your calculator. What's the chances that there's no accidents at this intersection? the probability so not not a very good chance about five percent chance that there's going to be no accidents this month at, at that intersection how could we figure out the chances that there's going to be one or more what would we do with this number one just one minus that so 0. 0.951 is that right so about a 95 percent chance that there's going to be an accident at that intersection this month if the average is three. Again, the CDF, CDF adds up all the probabilities at whatever number you're dealing with and down. So if we wanted the probability that there's five or more accidents, then we could put in, use the CDF and put in X is 4, and then just subtract that from whatever your answer is. Subtract it from 1 to see what the higher part of it is. And at 2 on Poussins, got the chart on here. Probably not going to use the chart because it's not the greatest thing ever. It doesn't fit everything. Uh, it only gives like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. It, it doesn't do a whole lot of different things on it. 
So if you wanted to try to use the chart, I'd show you how to do that. That's your assignment.